The elders are in full flower at the moment. So I thought it would be lovely to do a painting with the elder flowers and some birds. And uh, looking at the flower itself, um, it's pretty obvious it wouldn't be very easy to paint every single tiny individual little floret. We just really want to give an impression of lace, laciness. And because I'm an impatient kind of person, I want to find a way of doing that reasonably quickly. So I'm going to show you today a way of doing that. So we'll put the uh, elder in a vase by the side of me here, together with the lavender from the other day. And, uh, and we'll get started. So um, I'm going to use a piece of paper to show you this on, first of all. This is uh, Arches paper that has been used before. It's been painted on the other side, so I'm not quite sure what kind of um, surface that's going to actually be, but I'm sure it will be fine for this demonstration. So first of all, we want to think about how we're going to position the flower. And uh, this is one I did earlier. And uh, so I've got one big flower at the top and some leaves and then another one down here. So basically, you could say that the, the flower is going to be there, the stems are going to be here, and the leaves are going to be like that, and then we have another one down here like that. Now, the trick to this is to take a piece of natural sponge. This is natural sponge. You can buy this from Jackson's. They sell a bag full of different sorts. They come in different types. This one's a fine texture. And uh, this one is a very coarse texture. And this one is somewhere in between. And this is the one that I've chosen for this particular um, technique. So what I'm going to do is I've got some white gouache here. And I've just added a tiny little bit of cadmium yellow to it. Any yellow would do. And um, I'm going to just activate it with a drop of water. And then I'm going to obviously use my brush to get it started. And just a very creamy color of white paint with just a tiny dab of yellow in it. Just add a little bit more, just so that you can see it against the paper. So there we are. And I'm going to take my sponge and I'm just going to literally pick up paint from there. I might put a little bit of water onto the sponge. I don't want to make the sponge soaking wet because I don't think that will work. But this is still a little bit of an experiment for me because I haven't done this for a long time. So I'm going to pick up some of the white gouache and then I'm going to print onto the paper. Need a bit more water. A little bit more yellow, maybe mix that in like that. And then pick that paint up and print it onto the paper like that. It's going to take a fair amount of water and quite a lot of paint. There we are, that's the start. Oops, there's a hair there. It's come from the last painting. And we'll put a bit more down here. Okay, so that's the first step. Then I'm going to take my um, watercolour pencil here and I'm going to come into the, to the wet paint area 
and just indicate the shadowy areas like this, the darkest shadows, trying to find the bits where there's more water and a few down here. Then I'm going to come in with a different watercolour pencil, one that isn't so dark, and do some circles, little circles, to indicate the flowers. You down here. Okay, and then I need my brush. And I'm going to paint some areas of yellow. And I'm going to allow the paintbrush to pick up some of the um, pencil and let it run. So we're going to have a mixture of yellow and white. Because these little flowers do have little white centers. We put in some areas of white to break up the yellow, so something like that. And down here, same thing. Very loose. Then we're going to want to put in the um, stems and they come from one point like that. They come out and then they branch across. Yes, they come from one point like that. Okay, and this one down here, do a similar thing. So it comes from one point. That's kind of the characteristic of this sort of shape of flower. So having done that, then we're going to take a, a fairly small brush and we're going to pick up some green. And here I'm making the green from yellow, cadmium yellow and um, Thalo blue and a little bit of black to make a fairly darkish kind of green. And then I'm just going to drop in indications of the stems like that over where I did the pencil lines. And then let's just draw the, the stalk like that and a little bit darker down one side. Just dropping that in and letting that run. And um, a uh, side there for the leaves. They're on a fairly substantial sort of stalk. And then we're going to go to a bigger brush again to do the leaves. Not perhaps quite that big. Maybe this one. This is a size 11. And we'll pick up some green and then starting with the point just 
press your brush down and let that more or less randomly So the only thing you need to make sure you do is that you have um, a point. There we are. And over here. Make sure you change the color frequently while you're painting the leaves. I'm just going to turn this round so I can get to the other side. So that's one way of doing elder flowers. And then the next thing, you can obviously elaborate on that. You might want to come in again with a little bit more color on one side, especially, and uh, just build that up a little bit. And then my next thought was I wanted to um, do a painting and put some birds in there into this tree. And I don't know about you, but one of the problems I have is with um, imagining how to position things in a painting when I'm um, constructing it, doing the composition. And I realized the other day that it's because I don't have a very good um, visual imagination. I'm not one of those people that lives in a world of pictures inside their head at all. And apparently that uh, there are people who do, and I didn't know that, but now I know that, and I know that I don't do that. So I realized why it was that I find it so difficult to uh, imagine a composition. So one way of getting around that problem is to use um, this trick. And I've got here some birds, which I have cut out of one of these napkins that, uh, that I have, these old, vintage napkins, which I use for decoupage. And um, I thought, well, I think I know how to make this easier for myself and maybe for other people. So I cut out three birds. Um, this one, I don't know if that's a green finch, a sparrow, and that's a great tit, I think, this one here. And I thought, I'm going to do that and I'm gonna play around with these and see where they look best on the painting and then I'll go ahead and do a composition and paint it. Okay, so um, so I did that and I was quite pleased really because I realized that obviously the scale isn't necessarily right, but it gives you a really good idea of what's going to look right. So I ended up, I tried that one there and I thought, well, that's not too bad. Um, can't remember exactly what, I think I, yeah, this one, I cut their legs off because I wanted them to, not be standing in silly positions, but I thought that could look quite good there. And that one could look quite good there. And this one, I would do him, when I do the actual painting, I'd make him a bit smaller and he could go down there. So I thought, oh, that's all right. Quite like that. And then, Whoops, I need to push that up a bit so you can see. So, okay. So yeah, so I quite like that. And I thought I'm going to do a bit of cutting, pasting, gluing, sticking or whatever. I need to get an old brush, pasting brush and some Mod Podge. Very useful, this stuff, marvelous. And then I'm going to stick them in position. So just like when you do decoup um, decoupage or collage or whatever. So he can live there. And this one can live there. Whoops. Just need to reposition him slightly. He's just got out of out of place. Okay. 
The good thing about this stuff is that you can paste it over the surface, over the top, as well as underneath, and it dries completely transparent. And then we put that one there, paste him down. I thought to myself when I did this, I thought, oh, that makes quite an interesting. And then you could come in after, after that's glued down, you could come in on top and um, add ink or whatever, or more paint. But the idea of doing this at this point is just to make my composition come to life. So I can see now what I want to paint. So I'm going to go away and uh, find a piece of paper, do something like this, draw the birds in position like this, and then come back and uh, paint that. So don't go away. <clears throat> so we've got the um, sketch now in place with the three birds. And I'm just mixing up the gouache. This is Windsor & Newton Designer's Gouache White. You could use Arteza as well, that's perfectly fine, or any other of the artist's brands are good. But ordinary uh, Arteza inexpensive gouache, white paint, any kind of white paint would be fine. Trying to make it reasonably thick and creamy. and a little bit creamy in colour too. So just pick that up, dab that on. And this um, sponge is now quite soggy because I already used it. So that's uh, perhaps not working quite as well as it should. But um, so I'm going to actually now mix some more yellow into that. Make it a bit darker. This is a this is what you might call an experimental technique from everybody's point of view because as you go along you'll find ways of making it work for you with whatever sponge you happen to have, whatever paint, and just you know be a bit free. Don't feel inhibited, don't try and copy what anyone else does, especially not me. There we are. So I'm using the other piece of sponge now because that's um, a bit drier and um, that's worked quite well. So then we can come in with some blobs like that where we need it. I mean you could do it all with a brush, you don't have to use the sponge, it's just it's ineffably quicker, much quicker. So then um, with my watercolour pencil I'll do the same as I did before. So I won't bore you with all of that because we're going to go on to painting the birds next. But that wants to go in at this point. Oh, I'll tell you what else you could try as well that might work is um, a little bit of scatter with some, with a toothbrush. That might also help another thought. Then with the other pencil, the smaller marks, and um, what I did with the first one I did, I actually came in with the sky too um, from behind and that was quite good but I'm going to let that dry first a little bit. Um, but I will now quickly um, just do a little bit of work on the birds. This one is green so we'll come in with some green and some yellow. So do that like that. Let him dry. Um, the 
great tit is essentially yellow, so we'll dash in the yellow. It could be a blue tit as well. I'm not sure. I think it's a great tit there. And then he has black head and sort of blackish around here. A white, <clears throat> white patch at the back of his neck and then sort of slightly lighter blackish green there. So we'll let that run and do what it will. And we'll see what that looks like afterwards. We can always change it a little bit. Now this sparrow has a sort of greenish gray front like that. And then behind he's brown. So I need to pick up some burnt sienna. And we'll just drop his his wing in. There. And a little bit of brown on his head. There. And then grey and forward there. Okay. While they're drying, we can come in with the um, stems. to the elder and then we'll drop in the main branch and the branch, the bits of branch that go off carrying the leaves. We'll pop those in in a second. There's another one down here. Control that a little bit. Um, what was I doing? Oh yes. So then, having having put the green in, I quite like to just when I'm using arches. One of the good things about that paper is that if you just touch some shadow in along the bottom line of your wet strokes, you will get nice bleeds. So we'll put the others in as well. I've got some gouache on my uh, palette here, which is messing up the colors. So I need to put that to one side and I'll come back to this little palette. And so on. Another trick is to use 
a watercolour pencil, like this one, to do the veins on the leaves, like this. Very effective, because you'll find that the paint will run into those lines. You don't need to do more than that. And uh, that's really, really good. And you can also use the watercolour pencil. You could work into the um, the watercolour of the bird rather than trying to paint all the details in with watercolour, which is always difficult. You can do watercolour pencil work on top, which is very effective because once you've done the lines like that, then you can just touch it with water and it softens it up. He needs a bit of a beak. And an eye. And let him dry. Okay, so I think I've shared with you now quite a few tips and tricks. So I'm going to finish this painting off in the next little while and I'll show you it at the end when it's done. So there we are, I've painted in the three birds and uh, so now it's just a matter of a few final touches uh, while I'm having to wait for it to dry a little bit before I can really put the uh, the last leaves in, I think. I'm just going to try here because I want to put a few more um, leaves in at this end. And uh, yeah, it's dry enough now. And you can always, um, if you want those to be a bit more blurry, you can always add some water and you can put your center veins in with the watercolor pencil, which gives a nice lot of texture. And up here, I put a leaf in there and it was wet still. So I'm, I'll come back into that when that's dry and sharpen that up a little bit. And I might um, also play around up here in the, uh, flowers, adding a little bit more um, detail to the blossoms, just emphasizing the areas that I made um, dark with the pencil initially, because that gives you the guidelines that you need in order to be able to turn it into a painting. Um, so there's that, and there's also the possibility of coming back with more white and softening any of the areas. You see, I've put the sky in and um, that's cobalt blue. So you can always paint a little bit of white into the sky like that if you want, just to, to break up that line a little bit, if you want. Um, you can play around quite a bit, really, one way or another. But the, the key crucial thing is that uh, what I did was my composition, experimenting with the actual birds cut out of paper. And um, I'm really happy with that technique. So we started with this. Well, actually, really, we started with that. Then I put the birds into it like that. Then I drew my sketch. And uh, yeah, the final painting will be when it's dry. Um, I'll show you that at the end. And uh, you can judge for yourself whether or not it was a good idea to go to all that trouble. Um, I'm rather pleased with it myself. I don't know what you think. I quite like it. Let's see what it's like when it's dry. Okay, so I will say goodbye for now. Just to mention, um, we're going to be introducing the opportunity to purchase paintings of mine, the originals, um, for people who are actually subscribed on our website. So if you head on over to the website, if you haven't already, 
If you make an account there, you can not only download all the sketches that we have up there for free, um, you can buy prints of my works, the ones I've been doing on YouTube over the last six months, and you will be able to buy occasionally um, original paintings. I'll have some of my um, originals up on there for you at reasonable prices. I don't plan to um, ask too much money for them. So just to let you know, that's a sort of preliminary announcement for anyone who's gone all the way through this video and has got right to the end and listened to the last few words. Those are the words that uh, are for you and you alone. So see you tomorrow. Bye everyone. Bye bye.